the Poco F2 Pro. It's powerfully cool. Before we get into the cool part, This is the POCO F2 Pro the successor one of the successors to the super hyped Polka phone for 2018 so this phone like the first one will not be on sale in the US but in markets like India and the Philippines this phone is fire for about 500 bucks when you translate it so it's not quite the same thing as the original which was like the maximum value for $300 but hey I'm okay with it and they also have the regular Polka phone F2 you want that but this phone is really interesting from the inside out the some checks allow the boxes you expect to find in a high-end phone I guess basically they're adding the word pro here and that just kinda means better so from the overall build quality to all the specs and all the numbers on paper and all the included features looking pretty complete not only is it a pretty big phone but you pick it up and you immediately notice it's it's built well it's solid to the point where text a little heavier than I expected and it's made of metal and glass so it doesn't creak or flex at all and you get plenty of extra school accent color for the power button is sweet as last time he saw a phone with both a headphone jack and inner blaster that is a rare combo for 2020 at the top of the phone also has that pop-up camera with an LED notification light and you get this sweet emerald color which I know pretty much every high-end phone now is a glass sandwich so it's kinda getting predictable but Lisa still feels good in hand and of course the piece there is a stones I say it is this this huge full screen corner to corner uninterrupted display case you haven't noticed there are a lot of hole punch cameras out there now and so this doesn't have a hole bunch doesn't have a notch in stewing my favorite method of getting rid of the hole punch camera and the self the camera will pop up soon I have a full screen corner corn display 6.67 inches of 1080 p.m. a lead and it's a flat display to no fancy curved glass which I am totally fine with its HJR 10 plus certified against up to app comfortable but not incredible 500 and it's time just happily have displays like this on the phone of this price though it is 60 hertz and i think about spending any more i would definitely be looking for higher refresh rate but aside from that it's clear that the standout feature of this already great harbor package is the screen the thing buried underneath is pretty good to at this point is also chemical at this is pretty much standard notice used to be a high end only feature but now it started to trickle down and it seems like the optical thing about reader under the glass is cheap enough that almost most any phone can include it and the public camera here has just a little extra little little extra flare to it that the LEDs on the module itself and actually if you go to the special features section in the settings you can configure the front camera effects and really customize that the sound effects and the light color for every time you open that front facing camera also gives a warning if you're doing it many times and on top of all that. It comes with this clear case which I'm learning people really like especially for getting rid of that little camera bump on the back but you're not into that which I'm usually not that he can always grab the skin from our channel sponsored the brand to mix it up with the color or the back texture finish no this matte black skin has never done the wrong soul and get below but Nancy I think holding this phone you know knowing I know it's 500 bucks but if I didn't know was 500 bucks the only thing I would take the off that this isn't a $900 phone is there's a little bit of rainbow banding on the display from off axis and also these rounded corners I just noticed the lower end phones for whatever reason just usually have more of swooping bigger corner radius while the higher end phones can tighten that up make it sharper more boxy other trade offs you can tell just holding it there is no wireless charging despite the glass back and there's also no IP official IP water dust resistance rating those things cost money vanage is the vibration motor as it buzzes in my hand and reminded about it now you can't necessarily tell that it is a cheap phone because of a bad vibration motor because there are expensive phones with bad vibration motors too but it's just it's never something you unnoticed unless you turn haptics off you will constantly be reminded about a bad Radley vibration motor petition for everyone to just work on those just just make those better there is a single mono speaker at the bottom of the stone which is bad news on the spec sheet but honestly it gets surprisingly loud and crisp and doesn't even really distort that much at all at high volumes I was listening to YouTube podcast maximum volume from across the room and was doing great this might be the best single mono speaker I've ever heard in a phone now it is you can still block the whole thing with one finger that's the downside of a single mono speaker but they made work using this phone for a couple days and it's got a lot of similarities from the OnePlus a pro I was just coming from including same chip 
Snapdragon A65 which means it's also 5G enabled it's about the same size as that phone and the battery life year was actually better it's got a hefty 4700 million power cell is only powering a 1080p 60Hz display so you'd expect great battery and it delivers great battery for bonus points it comes with this hefty boy in the box this is a 30W fast charger comes with a $500 phone now as you can tell this is not a US plug so I've been charging it at regular speeds with a charge I already have but good battery life plus fast charging in the box means I'm fine with the world charging ok so this phone has quad cameras on the back and cameras here our work becomes a little more obvious especially to me if you are pretending to be a high energy flagship versus actually being a high energy flagship phone now when you hear 64 megapixel quad camera array capable of 8k video I mean that's a pretty good set of numbers on paper now that I've used it on site this camera system is capable but it's not quite the crazy high end you might expect just in the numbers the main camera is solid is a 64 megapixel sensor but it's gonna spit out 16 megapixel images by default and you can see they look fine now I'm not complaining they aren't amazing photos they're not particularly sharp or great with colors or dynamic range or anything like that but nothing's terrible about them either to get to low light so that's fine you would be buying this phone you shouldn't be buying this phone for impressive image quality at a low price now that would be you'd be looking along the lines of Pixel IE iPhone SE but unlike those phones this one also has an outright camera which is in a cool to have it's a lot softer and not nearly as good of the camera as the main one but at least it's fun it serves its purpose for larger subjects and that wider field of view and then there's two more cameras there is a 5 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel depth camera that you made and ready to write those off you might have thought I was gonna write those off but I use them expecting to write them off is actually fairly impressed the depth camera seems to be doing at least something for portrait mode shots and use portrait mode much but the cutouts here look good maybe a little artificial if anything in the 5 megapixel macro camera is actually decent now I've been shooting down all those 2 megapixel macro cameras pretty hard this year because they're just bad they look bad but somewhere I guess between those 2 megapixel macros and this 5 megapixel the shots got a little more usable and now macro shooting is actually fun you can get some interesting results colors are a little muted but overall I'm not mad at them for including this one and in the south the camera is again fine it's about on par with the main camera it's funny they don't they don't watermark the southeast by default but they do watermark everything else but you look at the details look at the fibers the soft cotton shop and give if you come beautiful even the 8k video is usable on the stone is kind of funny it actually lags pretty hard when recording and playing back that 8k video on the phone which i thought was a pretty bad sign that i imported look at it on the computer and it looks fine so overall is a capable camera system it's fun is not to give you the best quality images and you should look elsewhere if you you want that but as far as a decent quad camera setup for 500 bucks this so now that really the software is probably the only reason I couldn't rock this phone every day my UI like I said is my thing and even performance to me because of my UI didn't feel high and like Snapdragon a 65 should feel smooth with a 1080p display pretty much always but it doesn't always hear part of that is a software part of that is also probably that I'm spoiled at this point getting used to always higher frustrate displays but i generally felt like it should be stuttering less and should be smoother and there is of course some cool features like theme selectors and the always on display with a customizable clock and things like that but there's also occasionally ads inside the ui and the stock apps but if i'm just evaluating this whole phone as a package for 500 bucks it's a deal they did a really good job here it's it's the real deal not have the the non pro poco f2 they have the poco x2 under just a whole ton of other competition in this space if you like different things about different budget phones and I talked about that in the Poco X2 video so this phone is a good sign of a lot of action in that space we might think and see that a lot of the improvement at the very high end now is pretty incremental to minor updates this year but is a lot of action down here so this is exciting to see thanks for watching